Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good evening, good evening, good evening. I am Minister Sharice, and I am grateful to be before you all tonight. Um, I definitely give honor to Minister George and this platform, and us. just grateful for the opportunity to be able to be used by God tonight uh, to speak what the Lord has given me to speak. Um, so I'm excited. I hope y'all are ready because I'm ready um, to go forth with the word that the Lord has given me. Definitely ready to be used by God. Um, so before we move forward, I just want to go forth um, in a word of prayer. Uh, so God, we just thank you. We love you. God, we just thank you, Lord, for being who you are. God, you are all in all. God, you are our strength. God, we just thank you tonight, God, that you are with us right here in the midst. God, right here in the midst of your people, God, and you're ready to move. God, you're ready to outpour. God, you're ready to say what it is you want to say to your people. So, Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking, God, that you prepare the hearts of your people. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that their ear gates are open to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Father, I pray, God, that he who has an ear to hear will hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying tonight. Father, we thank you for this word. God, we thank you, Lord, that you're getting ready to roar in a mighty way. Father, I ask, oh God, that I decrease completely. Father, I offer my flesh, God, and I'm asking, oh God, that you crucify it. And I'm asking, oh God, that your Holy Spirit increases in me tonight. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are getting ready to have your way. You've already gone before me, God. So we rebuke anything that's not of you, any distractions, any fear any nervousness. Father, anything that's not of you, we rebuke it tonight and we say, Holy Spirit, have your way in the name of Jesus. We thank you. Father, we love you. We honor you. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 And so um, I want to talk to you all tonight. The, the, the message that the Lord has given me is the strength to fight. Strength to fight. I'm going to say it again. Um, the strength to fight. So here lately, just in this last season that I've been in, <clears throat> I felt like that I was in the fight for my life. I felt like that I was in a, a very challenging season, um, just a very, just a, a season that I'm like, God, what is going on? What what type of season in this? <clears throat> and so I had my days as I was going through that particular season of my life where it just seemed so, ch so challenging, where it just seemed like uh, if I could identify it, the, the enemy had just cranked the heat up on me. And so um, I could remember the days where I wanted to give up and I just kind of wanted to throw in a towel where I just didn't feel like fighting, where I said, you know, this this is just, it just feels like too much that the Lord spoke to me um, and he whispered to me the strength to fight, that he has given me the strength to fight. And so I know that it seems hard. I know that you feel like giving up. I know you're tired of fighting. You're tired of pressing, but I'm here tonight as your encourager. I'm here tonight as your you know, push her in the spirit to let you know that the Lord has given you strength to fight. So fret not, the Lord has given you strength to fight. So as I was thinking, you know, and just preparing for tonight, um, the Lord laid upon my heart the story of David and Goliath. And so um, as we, um, I'm going to read, I'm gonna, we're going to go right into the scriptures. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 17. Um, that's First Samuel chapter 17. And we're going to look at the story of David and Goliath. And so um, I'm going to read actually starting at verse 32. And we're going to walk through this story, but I'm going to start at verse 32. And it says, and David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out, went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. 
thy servants slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion, thank you, Lord, and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with thee. Listen, as I was reading, I felt my strength coming on. Listen, it's power in the word of God. So if you don't know, you know, we most of us may know the story of David and Goliath, but I want to give you a little backdrop of what's going on um, in First Samuel set and First Samuel chapter seventeen. So what's going on is you have the 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 men of Israel and you have the Philistine army. They gathered together to battle. They're going up against one. They're preparing to go up against one another. And so as you have the um, the the two armies preparing to battle. And we're talking about the strength to fight. So you have the men of Israel and you have the Philistine army. And the men of Israel understood that the Philistine army was their opponent. So you have the, the, the men of Israel, they're God's chosen people. That's who God made his covenant with. And then you have the Philistines, which are their opponents. They, they are against God and they're against God's people. And so when we think about the strength to fight, when we think about being in a fight at all, the first thing that you must do is identify your enemies. You must identify your enemies. See, the men of Israel understood who their enemies were. They understood that the Philistines, they're not for us, they're against us. They're not for God, but they're against God. It was the Philistines that there was, that was their opponents. So the Philistines were the enemy. And so some of you have been in battles and you have not taken time to identify the enemy. That's first and foremost. So you're, un you're trying to figure out what is this I'm going through? Why am I going through this? Have you taken time to identify your enemy? Have you taken time to identify what has come up against you? So whenever you are in a fight, the first thing that you must do is identify your enemies. Some of you don't even recognize that you're in a battle. That's first thing first. You don't even recognize that the enemy has come up against you. You kind of just going day to day and you have not yet recognize that there's a real enemy, there's a real adversary that has come up against you. Then there are some of you, you've been fighting the wrong ones. You've been fighting against friends, you've been fighting against family, co-workers, long story short, you've been fighting against flesh. When the Bible tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So you've been fighting against flesh when that's not where your fight should be. Your fight is in the spiritual realm. And not only that, not only so much as flesh, but you have some that's been fighting the Holy Spirit when you don't even recognize that you and the Holy Spirit are on the same team. It's the Holy Spirit that empowers you. It's the Holy Spirit that has come to strengthen you and you've been wrestling against him. So you must take time to identify what's fighting you. So I ask you, have you identified your enemy? What's fighting you? Is it depression? Is it fear? Maybe even loneliness? You must identify your enemy. So we understand that uh, the men of Israel were going up against the Philistines. And the Bible says that outcomes, I'm paraphrasing, outcomes amongst the Philistines, there's a champion. And there's a champion and his name is Goliath. And the Bible tells us that he measures to be about six cubits in the span. So I don't know if you're like me. I didn't know what six cubits in the span was. But I like to Google. And so I did look that up and I learned that they say that six cubits in the span is about nine feet, nine inches tall. So not only is Goliath a champion, but he's a giant champion. Could you imagine how intimidating that could be? So you had this champion, this giant champion that has come out from amongst the Philistines and he like, choose for me somebody to fight. Just choose for me one. And he said, so if I fight him and kill him, Y'all must serve us. But if he fight me, kill me, then y'all, we gonna serve y'all. So that showed me right there instantly, it was a fight for freedom. Somebody say, there's a fight for my freedom. There's a fight for my freedom. So um, as uh, Goliath is looking for somebody to fight. And so the Bible goes on to tell us that when the men of Israel heard this, 
These men were afraid. The Bible says they were dismayed and greatly afraid. So they were afraid to fight Goliath. They were afraid of this giant. They were afraid to go up against him. So they were afraid. But what I love about God is that he already knew that they would be afraid. And so um, he sent in David. So on comes the scene. Here comes David. Um, First Samuel chapter 17. Here comes David. And so, um, as you know, David was the shepherd's boy. David actually in the previous chapter was just anointed as king. And although he was anointed as king, he had not yet stepped into his authority as king. So he was still tending and doing his day to day duties. And so the Bible tells us that he was actually, you know, as the the, the armies were, you know, battling and, you know, Goliath looking for somebody to fight. He actually was going to take his brothers some food because his brothers were a part of the Israel army. So here it is. David is going to take his brother some food and uh, get a report for his father. And I can't imagine that David knew when he woke up that morning that he was going to wake up and fight, you know, this giant, that he was going to wake up and fight the ones that everybody else was afraid of. I can't imagine that David knew that. Surely David probably just I want up here, check on my brothers, take them some food, bring this report back to my father. And so the Bible tells us that, um, you know, Goliath was looking for somebody to fight. And as Goliath was looking for some somebody to fight, David heard him. And David is trying to figure out what is going on. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that should defy the armies of the living God? Who is this? <laughs> And I I appreciate it. Let me say this. I appreciate it. David even stopping to identify who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Listen, who is this uh, Philistine that's coming up against the armies of the living God? In the same way that David asked that question, that's what we have to do. Who is this who, who is this enemy that has come up against my marriage? Who is this enemy? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that has come up against my child? Who is this that is coming up against me, a servant of the living God? That's what we have to do. We can't be, t- we don't have time to be timid. Thank you, Lord. We have to know how to confront. We have to know how to act. Who is this? What's going on? After you identify as you are identifying your enemies, he's we have to figure out who is this enemy that has chose to come up against me because you got the right one. Listen, I can remember when I was in in the world. Listen, my BC days, and I, I used to fight a lot. I'm just gonna be honest. I used to fight a lot, but now I fight for the Lord. But I can remember when I was waiting for someone to try something back then. I had my days where I won some and I lost some. Thank God through the power of the Holy Spirit now, I never lose none. But I had my days where I was just waiting, just waiting for someone to try something. The same way I was like that for the enemy, the same way when I was working for the enemy, doing the enemy's job, is the same way now that I crossed over to Christ's side, that's the same bonus that I have to have for Christ. Now, it shouldn't, it seemed like we got this thing twisted that we was bold in the world. Now, when we on Christ's side, we get tipped. The devil's a liar. No, we're going to be bold for God the way he created us to be. So that's why we have to say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that has come up against my mind? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that's come up against my family? That same boldness that David carried is the same boldness that the Lord is calling for us to carry. Amen. So David began to ask questions and he began to say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that has come up, that that is defying the armies of the living God? And so the Bible, you know, I'm kind of fast forwarding, but the Bible tells us um, that David volunteered to fight. Uh, My favorite verse of the whole the whole chapter is verse 32. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him, for I will fight with him. So listen, so what that showed me was here is this young shepherd's boy. You had the men of Israel who were running away, but here's this young shepherd's boy who volunteered. He didn't even come up there for that, but I just believe he was sent on purpose for purpose. I just believe he was sent 
on an assignment. See, the Lord already knew that they were going to be afraid, but he had their backs anyway, and he sent David in. And so when David, you know, volunteered to fight and said, let no man's heart fail. <laughs> That's what we got to tell our neighbors sometimes when they're afraid of the Goliath. We got to say, don't let your heart fail. I'll fight. I'll fight for my sister. Come on. I'll fight for my brother. <laughs> I'll fight for whoever I need to fight for. Come on. So that showed me that David had the courage to fight. Hallelujah. So you had the other men of God, the men of Israel, who were afraid to fight the Goliath, but it was David who volunteered to fight. He had courage. Why? Because he knew who his God was. How many of you know the strength of your God? How many of you know the God that you serve, the God that delivered you, the God, you know, that brought you through this, who brought you through that? He knew who his God was. He knew what God had done for him in the past. And so he had faith and not in himself. See, we can't have, don't, don't ever think that it's your own ability. Don't ever think that you can do it yourself. No, we must have faith in God. It's God. It's not you. Listen, I'm not standing here tonight by my own strength. Trust me. It's by the spirit of God. Okay. So David had the courage to fight. Why? Because he knew his strength was not in his own abilities. He knew his strength was not in himself, but it was in God. And last time I checked, God has never lost a battle. Amen. So even when we talk about the courage to fight, Joshua 1 and 9, it says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. Uh-oh, the Bible says that the men of Israel were dismayed and greatly afraid. So here it is in Joshua 1 and 9, it says, Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Have I not commanded you? So here it is in the word of God. In Joshua 1 and 9, he says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. So that is a commandment. Being courageous is not optional. It is a commandment. It's the word of God. And God is commanding us to be strong and courageous, to not be frightened. Don't be dismayed. For the, he's letting us know, for I'm with you wherever you go. So right here, he's already telling us, I've given you the command to be courageous. Somebody say, I'm going to walk in the command. I'm going to walk in the command. When I look up the definition of courage, thank you, Lord. Courage, the ability to do something that frightens one. The ability to do something that frightens one. Do you have courage? Do you? You watching this, do you have courage? Do you have courage, the ability to do something that frightens one? Do you have the courage to go up against the thing that everybody else is running away from? Do you have the courage to fight when mommy didn't want to fight, when daddy didn't want to fight, grandma, grandpa? Do you have the courage to go up against the thing that everybody else was afraid of? Courage. Thank you, Lord, for courage tonight. Thank you, Lord, for courage tonight. So when everyone else is running away from the Goliath, I prophesy tonight that you are going to run to the Goliath. When everyone else is running away, you will run to the Goliath in Jesus' name. Why? Because you have courage. So now here it is in the story. David is now getting in position to fight Goliath. And Saul, King Saul, he didn't think David could, could could actually defeat Goliath. But David is letting Saul know, I got it, I got it. You know, like he's letting him know, like, I, I, listen, I didn't I didn't been delivered from this, I didn't been delivered from that. Actually, let me read specifically um, what he was saying. And so Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For there are but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. So there it was. King Saul was so focused on you, a young man. Come on, come on. So let one of my uh, one of my scriptures let no man despise you of your youth. So here it is. Saul said, he you you a you a young boy. You know you 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 kind of young, and he's been a man of war from his youth, and here you are a youth. You know what I'm saying? And so David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. <clears throat> and I went after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. 
And so thy servants slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Seeing he had defied the armies of the living God, David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And so long story short, David is giving, listen, let me give you my resume. Listen, because I know the God that I serve. And so Saul didn't think um, David can do it, but David is reassuring King Saul that I got this by the power of the Holy Spirit. I got this because I know what the Lord has done for me. And so one of the things, you know, even in that the Bible goes on to say that um, Saul gave David his armor. Um, he gave David his armor, but David could not use Saul's armor. The Bible tells us that David said, I, can, uh -uh, I haven't proved this. It said, I have not, so, uh, it says, um, he have not proved it. And so here it is. David said, I can't use this armor because I have not proved it. And so when I thought about that, when I thought about, you know, um, how David didn't want to use the armor because he had, hadn't proved it. If you don't know what prove me, it means tried and tested. When you prove something, you show that it's true. You show that it works. Um, so he couldn't use his armor because it hadn't been proven, but he used the stones and he used his sling. So that showed me that that must have been proven. So that was a proven weapon that was shown to be true that worked for David. So when I thought about that, weapon of choice and you know how david chose to use you know what what had been proved for him maybe the armor was proved for saul maybe that was tried and tested for saul but david said i'm not going into battle with this because i ain't proved it i i don't know if this works you know maybe it works for you paraphrasing but does it work for me and so one thing that we have to be careful of doing is going into battles with things that haven't been proved going into battles with people that haven't been proved but that's a story for a different day listen have they been proven has it been proven before we go into battle i got i gotta make sure it's proven amen so when we thought when i you know even examining you know david's weapon of choice you know, and how it was proven. Um, I have to ask you, so so Saul had his armor and then David, you know, he had a slingshot in his stones. And so I have to ask you, what is your weapon? <laughs> what is your weapon that's been proven? And so when I even looked up the definition of weapon, and this is gonna bless you. Weapon, an instrument of offense. An instrument of offense. Anything used or designed to be used in destroying or annoying an enemy. What is your weapon? What is the weapon that the Lord has placed in your hand that is going to defeat the enemy? What is the weapon that the Lord has placed in your hand that's going to knock down that Goliath? Saul had armor, David had a slingshot, and Goliath had a sword and a spear. But what do you have? What has the Lord placed in your hand that's going to cause an offense to the enemy? Listen, when God places the weapon in our hand, it's to cause an offense to the enemy. I don't know about you, but the same way that the enemy wants to cause an offense to me, come on. The same way he wants you to be so bothered and upset and tormented is the same way that the Lord has placed this weapon in my hand to torment the pits of hell. It's the same way that the Lord has placed this in my hand to torment the enemy, to knock down the Goliath. So I must ask you, and I want you to really think about this. What has the Lord given me? What is the weapon that the Lord has given me? that is going to offend the enemy. <laughs> and as I was preparing this, the Lord began to deal with me about three different weapons. And so as we're talking about weapons, for some of you, it's worship. God has called you to simply worship on another level. He's called you for as a worship leader, but you've been hiding behind the, the curtains. You've been hiding behind other voices, but it's time for you to come forth and use your weapon use your weapon of worship for some of you you are going to tap into another level of intercession that is going to cause deliverance not only to hit your house but it's going to hit the house of others through your prayers through you going before the lord before you by you turning away your plate <laughs> through fasting through praying through seeking the face of the lord not only is it going to cause deliverance to hit your house but it's going to cause deliverance to hit your neighbor house to hit other people's house so you want to tap into another level of intercession. So use your weapon. 
Lastly, there's a weapon of kingdom businesses that's going to defeat the Goliath of poverty off the bloodline. I thought the Lord was specifically dealing with me about the, 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 the poverty um, in the bloodline, but by the kingdom businesses arising, the Lord said it's going to knock down, it's going to defeat the Goliath off of the bloodline. So I say kingdom businesses arise. That is the weapon that the Lord has given you. So come forth and use your weapons there are multiple weapons but those are the three that i felt the lord was specifically the lord was specifically dealing with me about intercession worship and kingdom businesses all three weapons that hell hates three weapons that offends the enemy so i say pick up your weapon and use the weapon all to the glory of god and as you you are as you are using your weapons know that you have the victory so the story ends in victory verse 50 says so david prevailed over the philistine with the sling and with the stone but i'm gonna change that and i'm gonna let god have his way so sharice prevailed over the philistine with her worship so sharice prevailed over the philistine with her prayers and smote the philistine and slew him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. There, therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheet thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And so the story, it is in victory. So you must know that you have the victory. And so I started to get scriptures pertaining to victory, but the Lord says, no. He said, I need them to know that they have the victory. I need their minds made up that they have the victory because guess what? The story doesn't change. If I come back and I check this story in 10 years, it still ends in victory. So the Lord says, it's time out for doubt, but I need you to have your mind made up that it is in victory. I don't know what Goliath that you're facing, but I need you to know that no matter how real it gets, no matter how hot the fire gets, that it is in victory. So the Lord says tonight, I need you to know, emphasis on no. He didn't tell me to get a bunch of scriptures pertaining to victory. He said, I simply just want them to know that they have the victory so you must know that you have the victory know that you have the victory through christ jesus god has given you the strength to fight everything that has come up against you i don't care how big or how small it appears to be he has already given you the victory the story doesn't change and neither does our god what he delivered you from in the past he's able to deliver you from this if he delivered you from that goliath he'll delivered you from this Goliath. It's the same God, just a different battle. So know that you have the victory in Christ. Know that it's the Lord that has given you the strength to fight. Second Corinthians 10 and 4 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hallelujah. My weapons are mighty in the Lord. Ephesians 6 and 10 says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of thine own might. I don't need you to be strong in you. I don't need you to be strong in your own ability, but I need you to be strong in me, says the spirit of the Lord. So be strong in the Lord in the power of thine own might. Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through who? Through Christ who strengthens me. My strength again is not in my own ability. My strength again is not in how many scriptures I know, but my strength is solely in the Lord. My strength is not in my age. My strength is not in what I have and what I don't have, but my strength, hallelujah, is in the Lord. 
Psalms 28 and 7 says, the Lord is my strength and my shield. That's enough to stop right there. He's my strength and he's my shield. That means he covers me in the midst of the battle. He's the one that protects me. He's my strength and he's my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiced. And with my song will I praise him. And even with uh with even with me reading that scripture, would I want would I even feel the lead, the the Lord wanted me to remind you is that even in the midst of the battle, you still must remember to worship him. You still must remember to praise him. The scripture says, therefore, my heart greatly rejoiced, and with my song will I praise him. So even as you're in the battle, the Lord is still placing a song inside of you. It's a song of deliverance. Hallelujah. It's a song of healing. It's a song of breakthrough. It's a song that breaks chain. And as he's placing that song inside of you, the Lord says to worship me. Even in the midst of the battle, I need you to keep your eyes on me. Don't keep your eyes on the Goliath. Don't keep your eyes on the situation. I need you to keep your eyes on me. Because if you just keep your eyes on me, you'll know that you already had the victory. You'll know that the story doesn't change. You'll know, God, that the, the giant still falls. Somebody said the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Hallelujah. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Hallelujah. Keep your eyes on God. Hallelujah. He's given us the strength to fight. Your strength is not in you. Your strength is not in your capability. Your strength is not in your gifts. Your strength is not in what you can do. The strength is not in what who you know and what you know and where you're being. Your strength is in the Lord. We rebuke glory things. Hallelujah. What I can do, who I am, who I know. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. My strength is in the, somebody say, my strength is in the Lord and only the Lord. It ain't in me, but my strength is in the Lord. Hallelujah. And I got to tell you this, that David fighting Goliath and winning, it costs freedom for his people. Because mind you, when Goliath was taunting them, he said, give me somebody to fight. And if they fight and kill me, we'll serve y'all. And if we fight and kill y'all, y'all must serve us. So remember I said in the beginning, it was a fight for freedom. And so by David being the bold man of God that he is, or that he was, he caused freedom for his people. And here you are. <laughs> Come here, David. You're steady wondering why you've been chosen for the battle. You're steady wondering why, why has this come up against me? Why I got to deal with that used to be? Why I got to? Why? 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 why, why? And God is trying to use you to cause freedom for others. And this is why we can't be selfish. This is why we can't be so self-centered. But we got to focus and keep our eyes on Jesus and understand why God has called us here. Understand why God has put us here. Understand why God has called us to that assignment. Obviously, if he's called you to assignment, if the enemy has caught, come up against you, that's because God allowed it and he knew that he could trust you with the assignment. And so David fighting Goliath and winning costs freedom for his people. And so I have to release this, this word of warning. And I felt the Lord was telling me that if you keep trying to do things in your own strength, because our strength, when we are in a when we are in battle, it's not in a, it's not in us. I keep I've been saying that the whole time. It's not in us. But if you keep trying to do this in your own strength, you will be destroyed by the Goliath. The Goliath is already on assignment to destroy you. The scripture says that the thief coming to steal, kill, and destroy. Let me tell you, the enemy has three agendas, to steal, kill, and destroy. It does not change. To steal, kill, and destroy. It does not change. So if you keep trying to fight it in your own strength, in a carnal way, you will be defeated by the Goliath. Amen. So we must do it in the strength of the Lord. It's time for us to heed tonight. It's time for us to hear what the Lord is saying to us. It's time for us to even repent for any way that we've been trying to fight this in our own capabilities, in our own strength, in a carnal way. When the Lord is saying, just rest in me, just rest in knowing that I had the victory. Just rest in knowing that you serve an undefeated God. So we thank God tonight for the strength to fight. So I'm going to 
just start right there and just end this off in prayer. Uh, so God, I just thank you tonight. I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, that you roared uh, tonight through me. I thank you, Lord, that you saw fit to use me. <laughs> I thank you, Lord, that you saw used, fit to use me. You're David. And God, and I thank you, Lord, that you are calling your warriors to arise. So, Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that your people heard you, that your people take heed. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that your people will go in the strength of the Lord. Father, we repent tonight for any way that we try to fight the battle in our own strength. Father, we repent tonight, God, when we got off off track of your will. God, when we didn't do things your way, but Father God, here we are and we surrender tonight. We say, yes, Lord, you have your way. We say, yes, Lord, we will obey. We say, yes, Lord, we will go in the strength of the Lord. God, we repent tonight for fear in the name of Jesus. We knock down even the Goliath of fear that's been taunting us for so long, that's been taunting our family members, that's been taunting our bloodline. But Father, we say the warriors are rising tonight, God. That same Goliath Goliath that tried to intimidate us. Father, we say, let no man's heart fail because of him, for we will fight him. Father, we will go in the strength of the Lord. Why? Because God, we know that it is in victory. So, Father, we thank you tonight for victory. We thank you, Lord, for your word. God, we thank you, Lord, that we will act and move on everything that you are telling us to do. Father, we thank you for divine strategies. God, you're giving us strategy on how to defeat the enemy. And we tell you, thank you, Lord. We thank you for the weapon you placed in our hand. God, no longer will we hide any longer. God, if you call us forth as a worshiper, a worship leader, an intercessor, a teacher, an evangelist, whatever you call us forth in, God, we will use our weapons tonight in the name of Jesus. So, God, we bless you tonight for your word. God, just breathe on your people tonight. Let this word get into the hearts in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you, Lord, that it fell on good ground. So God, we glorify you and we bless you and we honor you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you, family.